FE colleges have got quite a special role to play in that they kind of take, typically they'll take learners who are 16 to 19 year olds and they'll either go on to employment or on to kind of further learning and training. And this is where I think analytics can provide a, a kind of bridge, a special support for students who want to kind of go on to specific pathways. You might find that um, if, you're, if you want a career in a digital environment, for example, in the creative and digital media, I don't know, but could it be that there's a correlation between how they use digital media while they were training and their future career? If you want them to go on to university, is it possible that we can encourage certain behaviours that will help students to... Um, achieve what they wanted to achieve? Can we help them to think about what routes are open to them? You know, for example, there might be a student from, say, I don't know, a specific background who's never imagined that he'd go on to university. Um, learning analytics, I think it's got the potential to show that student that regardless of background, people who are behaving or achieving in the way that that student is doing actually went on to do great things. And it could be used in an inspirational way like that, you know, to show the possible pathways that exist and provide the bridge onto employment and further learning. I think sometimes people have got preconceived ideas about what they can and can't do. And sometimes what learning analytics does is kind of strips away those characteristics and preconceptions and it actually says, well, this is what you're actually doing. And other stu students who did this went on to be very successful in this industry. One college principal has just said, and it totally to me that uh, people who study hairdressing actually are very successful in retail and it could be that while they're studying hairdressing they actually develop those interpersonal skills that are needed, those communication skills, those presentation skills that are actually very needed in retail and other aspects of business. I think what we've got the potential to do here is to really drill down into what skills um, students are learning while they're at college and that enables us to give them much better advice and guidance into what the future could hold for them, what, the, what their potential is. I think you'll find that in FE colleges the benefits of learning analytics do go beyond the course or module level. Um, what I've seen is that the aggregated results of learning analytics and uh, the dashboards and visualizations we've produced are actually of great interest to curriculum managers, to uh, directors of uh, planning and so on, um, vice principals responsible for curriculum and qualities, because what they get is an overview across the whole organization and then they can see whether they're serving all their students in, in the same way. You know, they can kind of compare uh, engagement and outcomes in different areas and and use that to inform their planning. Uh, that is actually just in the internal level, that's using the internal data. There's more that they can do if they bring external data into that same visualisation or dashboard and they can get insights um, across the, re you know, of, of what they can do externally to meet local area needs. Colleges have got uh, a number of different types of data available to them. So there's the learning analytics data that we've already talked about, which is uh, relating to a student's activities and behaviours and, and so on. They also have to um, submit individual learner record returns. So they've got very structured data which they collect very regularly uh, on a monthly basis. Um, what we can do in learning analytics is combine these two sources of data and produce quite high-level reports. And additionally, we can bring in external sources of data, such as um, data about the local area, about the population, about deprivation in the area, maybe lab labour market needs. Um, and by looking at these two things together, colleges can really think strategically about how their college is contributing to the community, what difference it's making is the curriculum offer actually matched to the needs of the community and the needs of the nation as a whole. Um, I think what the learning analytics software, uh, the dashboards that we're developing, what they allow us to do is to bring these data sources together in a way that you can look at them as a whole entity. Colleges can use um, learning analytics data to actually help them to make the case for funding because it shows 
how students are learning, but in the context, in a much wider context of the local area, of the college, of the service that the college is providing to the local population, to businesses. The funding for FE colleges is actually coming through local organisations, you know, local enterprise partnerships. And um, they'd be very interested to see how colleges are meeting local needs. Benchmarking is very important to um, FE colleges, universities, you know, everyone really to see how um, they're doing compared to others. It's interesting that in FE it's actually easier to do benchmarking because um, whereas universities um, can design their own degrees, what you find in uh, further education and vocational qualifications is that the qualifications are standardised and well defined throughout the country. Um, so this means that you know if I'm delivering I don't know level two hairdressing I can easily compare it to that exact same course in a, another college and it can give me an insight into what teaching methods are working well. Is there something about the environment you know at one college as opposed to another college that's, um, that's helping the delivery? Um, it really can give an insight into um, how you're meeting the needs of your learners. So for example, when learners come into a college, um, the college has various information about them already. For example, how well they did at school um, and, and so how well they're expected to do. And what we can do with benchmarking is see how well that value add is, um, is coming across. So a, a value add is how well a student has done, uh, uh, how much a student has progressed as compared to how well you'd have expected them to progress. If you come in with kind of, um, I don't know, say grade C's, an average pro progression, you know, would be that you'd kind of stay at that level but at a higher qualification. What you can measure by value add is if you can bring that student's grades up higher, so maybe get them to achieve B's and so on. Um, if, if we've got the data underpinning this, it enables quite detailed and accurate analysis of what's working well in different places. The funding for colleges is being devolved to a, a local area level and that means that colleges are really having to make the case for funding at a local level. At the same time, there's a national picture in that governments are expecting colleges to be able to provide the trained workforce that's needed for economic development. What we can do with learning analytics data is actually combine um, the information about the students and the qualifications they're achieving um, with the information about the lo local area needs, labour market needs and so on and it can help colleges to plan strategically to meet those needs. A principal of a college might be approached by an employer to say that you know I'm thinking of setting up a, a manufacturing um, plant here or maybe a retail warehouse, would you be able to supply the qualified people that I need? And in fact, and in the past it would have been very difficult for a principal to predict that, you know, you'd have to go for a kind of finger in the air estimate. What you can do with the data is actually produce a data informed estimate of, of how you'd meet those needs so it can help colleges to make the case.